Hello and welcome to my video, part two of um, uh, part one. And uh, it's this tree. Okay, so it's big, seriously big painting. Um, I'll put the size on the screen for those who are interested. And uh, it's on canvas, not my usual um, plywood. So there we are. Right, now because it's so big, I'm going to do it in sections. So the first thing I'm going to do, starting at the bottom, not the exact bottom, but um, the bottom part of the sky, I'm just going to put a blue tone on there, uh, just to sort of give the um, feeling of a sky without painting too much of a sky, because it's more about it's more about the tree than the sky. This this painting. So um, okay, ultramarine blue. Now this is a lovely blue, one of my favourites, um, and I'm I'm not I'm going to sort of add quite a lot of oil to it. Uh, I'm just testing it to make sure it doesn't run off the um, palette because if it runs off the palette, it'll run off the painting. So uh, I'll just let me uh, fiddle around here for a minute. Oh, and you'll notice I'm I'm not trying to be stylish, but I'm I'm wearing um, a hat. The reason I'm wearing the hat is A, because it's cold, and B, um, so I can clip my microphone to it. And uh, wherever I put my head, the microphone is in the same place each time. So there shouldn't be any variation in sound. Now, um, glazing. Right, lots of, lots of questions about glazing. What is glazing? Well, it's working on a dry painting, basically. And glazing doesn't mean that the paint has to have... Um, a lot of oil in it. So in other words, if I put this on here, like so, I can either have to add it with oil, which is what this has got, or I can add it pretty well straight from the tube. Although with oil added, you get more flexibility. You can do more things. So all I want to do really with this is, is a tone. I'm not really going to get into um, dramatic skies, although I don't know, maybe I can't help it. Maybe they always will be slightly dramatic. So there was a little bit of a little bit of blue there. So we'll look at that in the camera. Possibly a bit too dark at the moment, but we'll we'll tone that back. Okay, and then let's have a little bit more up here. This is going to be one of those uh, paintings where the commentary is going to be a bit obvious really so I'm holding a brush in my hand and I'm <laughs> I'm adding a bit of blue between the branches trying not to go onto the tree too much because there'll be a different color on the tree but if I did it doesn't really matter that much for instance here you see I'm going over that branch that's swooping down that way um, it doesn't matter I can wipe it off to uh, bring the branch back to its full strength. So I've just uh, come back from a trip to the Pyrenees. That's the mountain range between France and Spain for those who don't know it. And um, it's an amazing place. Okay, I might put a picture or two on the screen. I, I, I didn't take a really good camera with me. I just took my phone and uh, it doesn't actually produce the best photos, but if uh, there's anything any good, I'll put them on the screen. Um, it's sort of slightly, it's quite a mystical sort of place. Stunningly beautiful mountain. Um, hard work walking up some of the hills, particularly with my condition. And um, But worth the struggle, I have to say. Anyway, I had this idea when I was down there. So there's, there, here's this great big tree that I've painted here. And um, the idea is that I will do a series of these, all on exactly the same size canvas which is pretty, pretty big. Um, and 
So they'll all be like part of a series. They'll all have a certain look to them. But they'll basically be portraits of trees. And by the time I finish, they'll be glazed, quite a few layers of glaze. But I, I think for the videos, you're only going to see this one, I think. But there may be, um, there may be more layers of gla glazing on it. And, um, you, you know, there's no real limit to how many layers you can add, actually. You can just keep going. So uh, it's a very blue sky, isn't it? But that's absolutely OK. It'll be um, toned down considerably. In fact, if I give this one an extra hard wipe here, you can see, actually, probably that this bit of sky is lighter than the others. So that, that's the sort of control that you have. And um, when the blue is on, maybe I'll add something to that too. I don't know yet. All high in the sky at the moment. Anyway, the series would be, I don't know, three or six, not sure, paintings of trees. Uh, hopefully they're all, you know, they're all sort of keyed in together, so they look like they're part of a series. And the idea is that I would sell them haven't sold much in the way of paintings lately um, and now that my situation has changed I used to design lots I mean thousands of paperback books but um, the company that I worked for on a freelance basis um, uh, was sold to a company that um, uh, basically gave all the work to um, uh, a company overseas which is fine it's their company they can do what they like with it and um, anyway so that's that's all gone now which means that I now only rely on painting which is which is what I like actually it takes away the stress and it takes away having to deal with people that I'd rather not deal with so um, that's my situation. So I've got to sell some paintings, basically. So uh, why not why not um, start out with this series? Could be could be fun. So when you're doing this, you see, you, you can go over branches like that. That's a very dark branch. So uh, it doesn't matter what I do there. I just go over it like so. If it was a light branch, then I would use paper to wipe off the blue on the branch to, to actually bring it back, like this here, which you may be able to see. Um, but you'll, it, you'll, it'll become more obvious, as usual. Now this is a this is a, a big painting and glazing can be done quite quickly. I don't want to go too fast, but I'm I'm hoping to um, go fast enough to make this into a um, premiere video, which means that I'm there answering questions uh, when it's first published on YouTube. And if I can get it done. Today, maybe I can. I don't want to rush too much. But, uh, okay, the reason you keep seeing me pop in on this side of the screen here is because I'm looking in the uh, camera. Um, bit more oil. To give you an idea of the the kind of consistency that I'm after here it's sort of like that that sort of, you know if I put the brush in it it sort of makes streaks like so but as you can see it's not actually dripping down the palette 
and it won't. It's just on the right, just the right mix. Okay. Once I've got this basic blue on the sky, then I will start to um, experiment with the idea of a touch of cloud, um, which uh, will be minimal. It'll just be, you know, a few straggly bits of cloud. Okay, that's not a bad sort of tone. I think that's going to look quite nice. You see, that's a, that's a lot of paint coverage um, with not with not a lot of paint. I mean, I, it's just a little lump, really. About um, uh, how big is it? I used to sort of scale my lumps of paint by um, the size of a chunky caterpillar, which of course is no help to anyone really. But, um, the amount of paint that I've got on the palette, I could hold the palette up, it won't make much sense, but here's a, a computer key. It's about that size, the lump of paint, that's all. Right, now I'm hoping I can do this without a step ladder. It is quite high. something I want to put in this video now if you want if you ever go to the Pyrenees I know that quite a lot of people um, go there in the summer with my paper I can highly recommend the guest house that we stayed in um, and I'm going to put the details to that uh, underneath the video in the box because um, if you are going to visit a place like the Pyrenees, uh, you want to stay somewhere comfortable. It can get, well, it depends when you go. See, now if it's summer, it can be really hot, no problem. You go in the winter, and it's still nice in the winter, not a lot to do, mind you, unless you're into skiing. Um, then, uh, you know, you might as well have somewhere to stay that's comfortable. And the people who own this guest house, it's a jeet, I suppose, um, are delightful people. I've known them a few, for a few years now and we've been there a couple of times. And uh, anyway, the details will be down there and um, well worth, well worth it, I have to say. Now then, back to the painting. Um, I'll let you into a little secret. <laughs> this is a, a personal thing. Okay. So, um, this video uh, and my voice, as they are at the moment, is probably um, uh, the last time you'll hear my this voice that I'm using now. It's not that I have spare voices lying around. It's just that I'm, I'm of a certain age. <laughs> uh, and when I was young I didn't really look after my teeth and I've just had um, some prosthetic teeth made I haven't got them in my face yet but I'll be picking them up in just over a week and I tested them I've gone I've gone too long with too many gaps in my teeth you know it's true, a lot, a lot of, not all Brits, but quite a lot of Brits, maybe just from my generation, we didn't have the best tooth care. And uh, so uh, anyway, I decided that I would get my teeth fixed. And uh, I, anyway, I tested them yesterday. I mean, I find it funny. I'm not, I'm not slightly, I'm not even a touch embarrassed about this. I tried them on yesterday and when I spoke in the dental surgery, 
um, suddenly I started sounding like a silly old guy with teeth that aren't working, if you know what I mean. A little bit whistly and um, strange, and I, I actually it didn't sound like me at all. So uh, that'll be interesting. Very, um, very, very comfortable teeth, I'd say. Okay, so we're getting the blues in there. That's looking quite interesting. So yeah, um, I'm gonna have a full mouth of teeth. I'll be able to smile. I don't. I tend not to. If you've got a few gaps in your teeth, you tend not to smile when you see people, or if you do, it's fleeting. Um, or you cover your mouth, you know, that sort of stuff. Anyway, um, I have to say, you know, I think art comes in many forms, and the person who's actually made this, I don't, it's not a full set of, you know, false teeth, it's just a, a few, a bit of gap filling, let's put it that way. Um, but it's an absolute work of art, how they, how they make these things. And I, um, I even got so interested, I started, I, have, I let you into another little secret. When I was young, I actually wanted to be a dentist. Uh, I either wanted to be a dentist or a plastic surgeon, I wasn't sure which. I was torn between the two, and then of course I end up painting things. So, um, okay, how's that looking? Good, it's good. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I quite, would have quite enjoyed dentistry. I think it's the sort of precision work. So yeah, the per I'll probably never meet the person who actually made my new teeth, but uh, they are a true artist, I'd say. Right, now then, back to the paintings. Uh, what am I talking about teeth for? What I Actually, the reason I keep talking like this is I, I, I'm not one of these people that actually likes silence, you see. I would normally, before I did YouTube videos, if I was painting, I'd just paint to music. Um, and then if I wanted to um, put a voice on, you know, I'd add it later. But it's actually easier to chat while you're painting. And, um, yeah, so I'll prattle on. Oh, yeah, so when I was down in Pyrenees with my wife, um, I found a place where there were some really old trees. It was next to a river. And the river, the colour of the river, it's absolutely, I, in fact, I'm going to, right, brace yourselves, here's some pictures. They may not be very good, but this is the couple of pictures that I took. And you can see the blue of the water. I think it's kale in, in, the, um, in the river, which makes it blue. Um, but there was this bunch of trees, all very old and very gnarly. So I thought, well, oh, that's interesting. So I stared at them for my regulation amount, which is around about a minute or two per tree to get it in my head. But I also took photos because you're going to want to see these. You can't, you can't see in my head, so you have to look at my photos. Um, and I thought, yeah, one tree per painting. You never know, somebody might buy either one or a set. You never know, but it's going to be the sort of painting where uh, the buyer would need to um, have a biggish place because they are biggish paintings. Okay, so there we are. We've got a bit of sky over the whole blue thingy. Right now, I can add a hint of white cloud quite easily. First of all, let's smooth these out. Doesn't matter if there's streaks, I quite like the, uh, the odd streak. And there's a little bit going on the tree, but you won't see it because it's just so pale. Now, here's a bit of white cloud without using paint. Where should we put it? Let's do it um, behind this bit here, right? Just behind that bit. So there we are. Very subtle. Doesn't get much subtler than that. So there's a sort of a hint of a lighter bit of sky there. I can increase that. In fact, I'm going to. Take it up to the edge of the tree there. And then a little bit lighter just here. 
Uh, you, as you can see, the, the, the um, sky starts to sort of have a bit of a bit of fluffy cloud in it. Right. Let's. Um, I think we'll put a bit probably there. Maybe I need to move the. Yeah, I think I need to move the camera. So before I move the camera, I'll just do some up here. There we are. See, literally just a touch. I don't want to add white to the um, blue sky. So let's have let's have something here. See how easy it is? Doesn't get much easier than that. Right, I uh, don't think it needs it anywhere else really. That's um although as I've got it here I should have it just that side of the um the limb so that it's obvious that it uh, is a continuation of what's behind it. Okay, that's cool. Now uh, a little bit there. And that is really it for the sky. So now we get on to the fun bit. Well, it's all fun, isn't it, really? Why else would one do it? Now then, um, that's my blue. The next colour I'm going to use is red ochre. So what I don't want to do is end up with a brown tree trunk. Now, I know some tree trunks are you know, brown. Um, but if you look at them carefully, there's lots of colours. And you can make brown interesting by adding it to blue. So I've just added a little bit of red ochre to uh, the ultramarine blue on my palette. And it gives you a, a, quite an interesting effect. I may be zooming in just so that you can see what's going on. But if I put some here, and one thing worth noting is that I'm not carefully painting. This is all sort of, you know, let's just get it on there. Worry about what, what, what we're going to do with it once it's on there. Don't worry about what you're going to do with it before you put it on there. Because, um, Uh, why make it any more stressful? Well, it isn't stressful. What am I talking about? Okay, so there's a, a sort of hint of bluey, browny, reddish colour. And it's subtle. Don't go mad. Keep it subtle. If it's subtle, it's in control. So if I put, if I put that there, right, this is pretty well with no oil, okay? And then you think, oh dear, that's ruined. Crikey, I'll give it up and um, take up another career. Forget that. It's the beauty of glazing, you see. You just wipe it to uh, knock it back. Or don't wipe it in certain places to bring it forward. So now that I've got that there, I want a, bit, a little bit of a highlight back into it. So if I just concentrate on that area there and rub it quite hard, you can see that got lighter again. That's the basic principle of glazing. Put it on, take it off. So the blue, the blue and the red ochre, that does make an interesting colour. It's not exactly... Um, not like a straight brown, that's quite strange. It's, it's almost like it's got grey in it and I haven't added any grey. And you, oh yeah, with these brushes, with something like a tree like that, okay? Let the, let the bristles make um, patterns. I'll mm. zoom you in so you can see that. Okay, that bit, suddenly that bit of wood has got a, a sort of barky texture to it. 
You know where you get bands, you get lines, and you get all kinds of marks on wood. But I'll add a few more. I'll add one coming around that way. But I'm, I, I, you have to believe me, I'm not taking a lot of care. There's nothing actually very precise happening here. The brush is doing an awful lot of the work for me. So you see these shapes here? But can you? I'm really, I'm really not good at getting the camera in the right place. Let's move it over that way a bit. There we go. So yeah, these lines here, these marks, it's just the fact that it's a cheap brush. And it's got an irregular top edge. It's all, you know, all the, bris all the bristles are different uh, lengths. So I'm going to work on that bit there because I like that and then just add some of these shapes. There we are. So it sort of build, gradually builds up the uh, sort of woody effect. And um, in fact, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to add a tiny amount of um, Payne's Grey to the tip of the brush and just sort of do a few of these. Why, you may ask? Well, I don't know, because it feels right. Painting is, is actually, if you think about it, it's, it's all about if you know feeling and getting a um, an emotion so again I did a tiny and when I say tiny it's really hardly any um, Payne's grey let's just shape that a little bit more there I don't want to darken stuff too much. I mean, I might have over darken that. So let's just pull a bit more light back into it, like so. Better. So uh, yeah, let me know what you think about this idea of um, a series of tree trunks. I, I personally think it's, um, it could be a, well, it's fun for me anyway. Um, a lot of fun. And also, uh, I have to say, it'll sort of get the, um, how can I put it, the Andrew, uh, okay, if you're an American, you probably may have heard of Andrew Wyeth, very, very um, famous artist. And uh, some of his trees that he painted are just, you know, out of this world, as they say. And uh, I've always liked his trees, so why not have a... A Davis tree. You never know. People might go for it. And the thing about being a freelance artist is you have to do that. You've got to take uh, risks. You you can either <laughs> if you're a, if you're a very wealthy person uh, and you're into painting, you could um, live a quite an interesting life just painting what you want, not listening to what anyone wants. Just. Do your own thing and some might say that that's a true artist that's what they do they don't care about selling things um, and that's all very well and good but you know i am not in that that club so i've got to sort of come up with ideas and um churn out a few paintings maybe churn out is the wrong word I don't actually churn anything out. I do actually um, think about what I'm doing. And there's certain things I don't paint. You know, I'm a, I'm a real traditionalist. I don't paint cars. I don't paint modern buildings. I don't even paint old buildings anymore. Um, I just want to paint nature. That's what I do. Right, so let's see. Let's have a little bit of nature over there.
And one thing I must do, you know, now, now um, what I was saying about designing books, now that I'm not doing that anymore, uh, and I have to say I'm quite relieved. I've been a working designer for 50 years and I think enough is enough. So this branch, let's add a little bit of the redness to it. Um, yeah, so yeah, 50 years of, 50 years of designing is more than enough. And it has been interesting, I have to say, I've done quite a few um, well-known designs in my life. And worked on some very interesting national and international magazines. That was, that was much more fun than the um, advertising stuff that I used to do. Oh, I don't know. E each had their own uh, point of interest. OK, so what I'm, what I'm trying to do, you may get the feeling of this now, is that I'm adding a, a reddish brown to it, but I'm not making it like solid brown because I don't want that. That would just be boring. You've got to keep all the um, interesting contrasts that you put in. And uh, let's see. Let's gradually work our way up. Part one of this video is doing very well, actually, I have to say. I uploaded it while I was in the Pyrenees. So it was uploaded from a mountainside. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's getting quite a few views. Let's have a nice, a few nice sort of bands of texture there. I don't know what species of tree this is, but um, it's quite an interesting one. Okay. Hopefully this won't be um, too long. Part one, I think, was um, well, well, certainly over two hours. This one, I think, will be under an hour. Where do I need to go now? Let me see. Okay, I've got a bit of quite a strong bit of light. Strong bit of light hitting hitting that part of the tree there. I'm going to keep that. Um, I will put a little bit of the brownie colour there, but I still want to keep that light spot. I'm also going to darken this limb here to to make it um, protrude more, make it look as though it's coming towards us. And I think if I just add a few little dark bits around here, let me Maybe all I need to do. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so let's move across the tree and up a bit. Now, what I what I imagined uh, with this idea of a series of trees is that somewhere out there, there's a person who lives in a, like a loft apartment in New York, possibly. I'm a Brit, you see, what do I know? It's only stuff I hear in movies most of the time. 
and they've got enormous walls and they, they really want to um, fill the wall and when they look out the window they're surrounded by, you know, the city that never sleeps. And it would be nice to have a bit of wood in your apartment, particularly if it isn't shedding dust everywhere. Of course this won't. And then you could have a series of trees. A little bit of light back in there. You could have a series of trees. You can have this one. And then you can have the type, which is just like a, a stump with a whole load of twigs just flying off it. You know, when it's been... Um, they call it pollarding, I think. Um, that would work quite well. And then on another wall, because they're so rich, they've got more than one wall, um, it could be something else. And of course, these are totally unique. And uh, just so that people know, if on the internet you see any of my paintings for sale, you won't. If so, if they are, if you're seeing stuff of mine for sale on a site anywhere, this does happen. Um, then it's not me, it's someone trying to con you. Uh, you'll know it's by me, because it will have my signature on the back, and it will also have my thumbprint. So a painting allegedly by Stuart Davis that doesn't have my thumbprint on it um, is a fake. And uh, I know that there's some people in China who are um, allegedly selling my painting, but uh, they're not. They fib. And it is sort of flattering to know that people are trying to pass off my stuff, but it can get irritating. But anyway, there you go. Um, right, so let's get a bit more, let me think, yeah, so, do you know, I, um, I keep meaning to get a stepladder. Okay, that's, I mean, you don't have to go completely crazy with this, just put it in places where you think it's going to work and where, you know, might look nice. I think up there is going to look pretty good like that. And then this branch, this very light branch, I've achieved the effect uh, down there, which I was fiddling with where, the, where it joins the tree. Um, I've got that, that bit working there. That's fine. That connects to the tree. This comes towards you. Now up here, I want to get a little bit of the brown colour in here, not there. I'll leave that one slightly light and just put a hint of this colour. Um, not much. I mean, really seriously, not much. Is there such thing as a serious little... There you go. So it's just a little hint of the colour. Very, very... Ridiculously uh, subtle. Now, what should we do next? I, I think that's it for the trunk and the brown. So if I go down here, I'm going to just get a, a little hint of a green on there. Um, and as usual with me, it's going to be sap green. I do actually, I'll tell you what, let's, let's experiment as well. I'm going to see what happens if I put a bit of yellow ochre on it in a couple of places. Again, for the entire painting, um, it's literally a tiny smear. And by a tiny smear, I mean, I mean, I took the top off and I just rubbed it, what was immediately in the tube, just rubbed it on the palette. 
Um, so that's yellow ochre. And now uh, a little bit of sap green, same deal, hardly anything coming out the tube, literally just a tiny smudge. Okay, so this is the same brush, not even going to wipe it. So, some very nice colours. In fact, ultramarine blue, red ochre, Payne's grey, and yellow ochre mixed together do make some really nice tones. I'm just going to show you this because it's worth seeing. Uh, there we are. So that's the sort of stuff I'm working with. Okay, so it's not like, you know, carefully uh, placed dabs of paint all around the edge of the palette, you know. I, I, I'm a believer in um, get the paint on the palette, get it off the palette, get it on the painting. No, don't have to sort of um, carefully arrange it. Now, this is not to say that uh, you, you might want to do that. It may suit your style, but uh, for me, it's just not. It doesn't seem necessary, but each to their own. A little hint of that colour on there. And it's a little bit too opaque. So, a little piece of paper. All I'm going to do is break it in a couple of places just to get some light back into it. Like so. Much more interesting. Okay, now a bit more oil. So yellow ochre and oil gives you a sort of muddy, goldy sort of colour. And where should we put that? Let's put it, um, let's have some down here just in a few tiny little places just to Have a bit there just to pull a bit more light back in that bit. The thing about old trees, worth remembering as you paint, that they are um, made out of lots and lots of colours. They're usually obviously very muted sort of colours, but um, there's usually lots of them. Because as much as I like this bit, I'm going to just sort of fondle it a bit with some yellow ochre, because I think it just might help. And it, whoops. That's right, Stuart, kick everything. Yeah, just that little hint. I think that might be it, but I wasn't going to do much with the roots. The, the next stage to this um, would be masses and masses of more twigs. Um, it's got quite a lot on it, but I really want it to all completely dry off before I do the uh, the complete twiggery and uh, yeah that will need another uh, another couple of weeks maybe less actually because this this should dry quite fast do I need to do anything to the roots now the question is what am I going to do I do you know I, I like the roots I'm actually very happy with the roots, but what I'm what I'm thinking of doing is slapping on a little bit more grass. I want to keep it simple, but I don't want it, I don't want it too simple. So we've got this dark grass here, and the other side is a hint of it as well. I like the, the roots are fine, but I went to um, I went to the art store before I went to the Pyrenees and I did get some light green so I'm just going to dig that out. This is uh, light green and uh, all I'm going to do is just again mark, um, mix it with 
foil. It's hardly any paint, just a little about the size of a small, no, size of a big pea. And I mean the vegetable. And um, what I'm going to do is mix some oil with it, just to sort of loosen it a bit. And then using a piece of paper into a taper. That's a taper. Let's get it where it's in focus. There's a taper. Right. And um, what I'm going to do is just dip this in the paint. Now it means making quite a lot of these because they won't last long. But you imagine, uh, okay, there's two ways of doing it. One is to hit it, and the other one is to just literally do that with it, up and down. And uh, which one am I going to do? I think the up and downy one. Now you could use a small brush, but I, I like the um, haphazardness of this. So if I do that, it just, the, the fact that I'm just sort of moving, you know, not carefully, just sort of up and down, that uh, makes the grass look a bit more um, grassy, I suppose. How to make grass grassy. So that's some hints of grassy grass there. Is there one that comes up here? Okay, why not? Don't try and do them regimented, you know, because grass doesn't do that. There we go. Easy peasy. I'm going to zoom in on that. So there we go. And all it is, it's, you know, it's just a touch. Don't even try to paint grass, just paint lines. The lines will become grass. Or grass, depending where you come from. And in England, that can change over a couple of hundred yards. Some people say grass, some people say grass. I'm a grass person. Because I'm from the south of England. Yep, definitely grassy. And if you make a clean line like that, one touch, clean line, don't, don't muck about with it. Let it have its full strength of green. Don't deprive it of its grassness. Right, so that's that's coming along quite well. So I'm just going to finish off with a few more of these. Over there, without overdoing it. Just the odd one or two that have got this sort of... Um, well, it's like spring growth, but it, uh, the landscape looks a bit... Uh, autumnal, doesn't it? But anyway, um, if it if it's not obvious whether it's spring or summer or autumn, then um, as you sit and look at this, you can decide what time of year it is, depending on how you feel. There we go. I mean, it's a tree, but it's got to have it's got to have a bit of grass around it, isn't it? It's only fair. And uh, how far am I going to go on that? Probably to here. Don't want to overdo it because I'm, you know, again, I want the attention up to the top. And as I said, also the next. The next phase will be twigging, and I think I, I may make a video, so there may be a, three parts to this. Um, if not, um, I'll just put it up on Facebook. There we go. Now this, uh, down the bottom here, you can't really see, so I'll move that. Um, at the moment it's basically mud and roots. 
I might leave that. That works quite well. And what about the other side of the painting? I could put a little, maybe a couple of bits of grass there. A bit more grass on the taper. And there we go, just the odd. There you go. If it works in the minimum, leave it in the minimum. Don't maximise your minimums. Okay, so I think that might be it, you know. So there we are. There's a sort of overview. Yeah, I'm definitely going to get a step ladder when I can afford it. I've got to sell some paintings first. So, uh, yeah, right. So that's it, I think. Now, um, if you want to come to Zoom classes, uh, link will be below. Check my Facebook page. Um, I always put adverts for the, the um, not the standard, you know, Facebook advert, but adverts that I make up myself uh, for the classes. And um, if you want to become a patron, don't let me stop you. If you are a patron and donate a certain amount each month, you get uh, free lessons on Zoom. And uh, there we are. And I hope you do, because it's not just about the money. I actually really enjoy the Zoom class, because it's, it's just such a laugh. And uh, it's not just painting. It's, uh, it's actually turning into quite a... A nice little uh, club of old friends and uh, hope to see you there sometime so that's it for now and thanks for watching see you soon bye for now